We have been talking about syngas already, and syngas is essentially a mixture of gases, most commonly referred to carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas, even though you can have some CO2, hydrogen sulfides, vapor, and so on. But typically, for a syngas to be efficient, you're going to have a high percentage of hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide. Though it can be also referred, especially if you're talking about ammonia, to the gases that are the raw materials for this, which is nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. So typically from now on in this course, whenever I say syngas, I will be referring to this mixture, the carbon rich mixture. Methane and synthesis gas or syngas are very important petrochemical feedstock. Why? Because they are the building blocks. They have a carbon material, hydrogen material, and oxygen can be obtained either from the oxides or most likely from oxygen gas. Okay. They will be used to produce intermediates and later on to other petrochemicals. Now, which type of material are produced by syngas? Well, end products, plastic, synthetic fiber, rubber, pharma, and other industries. Actually, let's check this out. From syngas, remember this is CO and hydrogen at least. You can have some CO2 as well. You can use it for iron reduction. Remember that iron has some oxygen. So if you, put, if you provide a reducing agent, you can produce some iron and CO2 goes as well. Syngas production, yeah, well, you can sell syngas as a final product. From syngas, you can uh, remove the hydrogen and use hydrogen, as stated before, for ammonia, other chemicals, and fuel cells. You can use syngas as a fuel, per se, because CO can be further oxidized, and hydrogen can be further oxidized to hydrogen dioxide, sorry, to water and carbon monoxide, either in a steam power plant or a turbine refinery. Synthetic natural gas, yeah, this is pretty common to find as, let's say, an alternative for CH4 or methane. So you got hydrogen and carbon monoxide. They are pretty similar, especially when you burn them. They are used in the fissure top reaction, extensively used in the World War II, in which Germans were out of fuel so what they did was to produce syngas and they produced naphthas and from here they produce petroleum or gasolines, diesels, lubricants and so on. From syngas we can produce methanol and actually we're going to see that later on, how to produce methanol, what are the conditions. But this is pretty straightforward, you got this, how do you do in order to convert to this, okay? So you can see carbon, hydrogen, oxygen are present. And for methanol, we can use it to improve the petroleum, or actually not improve it, but to substitute in order to add to the petroleum pool, polyolefins, methyl acetate, but more commonly, they can be used for ethylene, acetic acid, formaldehyde, and so on. Petrochemical derivatives based on syngas and carbon monoxide have been experienced a steady growth why? Because they are pretty easy to produce and they can be, as stated before, they are very versatile. And specifically for the methanol use, it is an excellent basis for the synthesis of some valuable petrochemicals, stated before, ammonia, methanol, formic acid, acetic acid, and so on. Now, recently, market studies have shown that there will be a further increase in the syngas and all the syngas derivatives. So why? Because petroleum is going down. So eventually what you want to do is the coal to convert it into syngas. Okay, well, this was already stated. Methanol is the largest consumer of synthesis gas. The reformed gas is meet certain, okay. Raw materials. So what are the raw materials you can already imagine? Stated before, natural gas. Why? Because natural gas is mainly methane. We're going to see some chemical equation later on. Refinery gases. So instead of burning all these stuff, sometimes you recover them and treat them. 
You can use naphtha for syngas, even though it's not recommended. Fill oil and residual heavy hydrocarbons. And let's see, okay, petroleum coke. And as I said before, guys, now coal is gaining importance once again in order to produce petroleum, coke, and syngas. Why? Because petroleum crude oil is increasing and it's very, let's say, volatile uh, in prices. So coal is now getting attention. Let's talk about the process technology. We have several ways to achieve our syngas. We got steam, methane reforming. So the name implies we need steam and methane. We got naphtha reforming, alpha-thermal reforming, oxygen reforming, and partial oxidation. So we got the feedstock. Depending on the feedstock, you're going to be using several technologies. And depending on the specific technology, you will be producing hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide, which is the main point of syngas. Sometimes you got CO2, leftover of methane and vapor, and some inerts. After several mass transfer separation processes, you will get hydrogen gas, carbon monoxide, syngas, and carbon dioxide separated. Okay, so these are the various steps involved here. Typically, you want to desulfurize the gas first because if you interact with sulfur right here, sulfur will also be oxidized to SO2 and SO3. So you're gonna remove that. Also steam reforming stated, compressions, probably you know something about these if you check out the naphtha reforming part. And the separation of CO2 is very important. Stated here, CO2 must be separated because this is not a fuel, so it cannot be further oxidized. That is, it cannot be further burnt. We got various available synthesis gas. Conventional, partial, combined, parallel, gas heated. But this is just an overview. Don't worry. We're going to be analyzing these ones right here. Here are the several pathways for syngas. And let's talk about this one right here. The basis of the manufacture of syngas was about the 19th century, about 1850s and so on. So essentially what they did, pretty common, we, they used coal and vapor in order to produce this gaseous mixture. This was very useful, guys. Try to imagine, you got these little pellets, small solids, but those are not that efficient in chemistry. And you got the water. So it's kind of counterintuitive to mix this. But what they did at high temperatures, they obtained this mixture. And of course, this you see it very beautiful carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas, but this is a gas. It's a mixture of gases and it's very, very flammable. If you were to add fire here, it will be uh, in fire and flames. So this was very useful because these are gases. They are pretty easy to use in chemistry, to transport and so on. That was before. Nowadays, we typically use steam reforming because carbon is not that clean compared to methane. In this method, we use methane plus water. We convert now carbon monoxide and now get even more hydrogen, so more fuel. Of course, later on, we're going to see in later courses that the ratio between hydrogen and carbon monoxide will be a fundamental factor for the combustion of syngas. We use a catalyst, a metal catalyst, which is nickel, and we must operate at high temperatures. So guys, this is important. We already saw this. Steam reforming was, I think, in analyzed in NAFTA reforming. So if you have any doubts on specifics, you can go back. Pressures are also very high. So this is kind of expensive. Pressurizing and high temperatures implies resources. There's also another process called partial oxidation. In, instead of using water, we're going to be using oxygen. So this is, let's say, not that convenient compared to this one right here. 
it produces less hydrogen and it must be at much higher temperatures and much higher pressures compared to here. So of course we will be preferring this one right here. And this will be, let's see, we already saw steam, methane reforming. We saw oxygen, partial oxidation, and now we're going to see naphtha reforming. In order to reform naphtha, you gotta gasify it first. Remember that naphtha is a liquid, you must gasify it by increasing the temperature, that means heat transfer from any other fuel. Typically, you will need to add more equipment. It's not the same getting natural gas directly to the process than naphtha, which must be preheated, uh, boiled, and it will cost energy, also some more money on the financial side. The sulfur content must be removed before. So because naphtha is typically high in sulfur content, it must be removed before we use it. If we send NAFTA directly to a syngas production facility, you are likely to produce SO2, SO3, and so on. And we got this equation. So these are, uh, let's say, rules of thumb. You got NAFTA, you got carbon and hydrogen. Typical ratio is almost 1 to 2 molar, vapor, and you produce CO2 and hydrogen gas. Remember what you want to do is essentially convert CO, so that's why not always you want to do this. Sometimes you want to increase the rate in order to ensure that you produce some CO and hydrogen gas. Okay guys, this was all about syngas. Syngas is extensively used in the industry, so that's why I show you plenty of processes. But the main idea is to get a fuel, either a liquid fuel, solid fuel, or gaseous fuel remove the sulfur content, reform it, use the so famous shift conversion, you will got CO, CO2, hydrogen gas, and some vapor. What you want to do is to remove via purification, remove CO2, separate hydrogen gas from CO, and then use the same gas eventually for other products, either as a fuel or as a petrochemical.